Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Starmorn. This week we are going to be addressing the classes. That's right, we've talked about the factions, we've talked about the races, and now it's time to talk about the classes. So like in the previous two videos, this is going to be a general overview focusing on lore. Um, we're not going to be taking a deep dive into all the skills and, you know, how each class hunts and that kind of thing. That would simply be too long for a single video, so we're going to instead look through each class um, and talk generally about it. Uh, and there will be future videos which cover each class. So with no further ado, let's get started. So the first class on the docket is the Beast, and we'll read this little blurb. The Beast class are shock troops that seek to overwhelm their opponents with a panoply of weapons and the enhanced strength granted to them by their suits. Beast stands for Bio-Interfacing Exoskeletal Assault Suit Tech. So it's sort of like a little miniature mech warrior or maybe a goliath or, um, yeah. Uh, and uh, this, as this picture makes clear, uh, it's a super heavy-duty power armor uh, with a bunch of mounted weapons attached to it. Um, here it has snazzy numbers as well and a unisex crotch protector. Uh, Foot-mounted jump jets, which sounds a little crazy to me, but um, nevertheless that's where they are. Uh, you, what can a beast do? You saw the picture, right? Fuck you up mostly covers it. But for those of you who demand tedious details, the beast has three skills, and each skill has many abilities in it. Uh, this Wikipedia entry is slightly out of date, but I'll let you know. Three skills of the beast are Mech Weapons Platform. In the game, it's called simply MWP. This involves using other uh, using the other weapons mounted on the suit, including a railgun, minigun, missile launcher, stabbing blade, wrist blade is what it's called, a net launcher, and, and more. I, I don't think there's more. I think that's it. The skill also contains abilities that have you punching, crushing. Uh, that's not the case anymore, I believe. That's all been moved to suit deck. And one of his in skills literally ripping an opponent in half. This is also in suit tech now. Uh, this is their uh, only, no, it's their, it's kind of their only insta-kill, uh, which, yeah, involves ripping their opponents in half, which is pretty cool. Plasma casting. Uh, this is using this fancy gadget here, a uh, little flame uh, flamethrower, plasma thrower, I suppose. And there's a whole skill tree dedicated to using this. and. To do this, you manage control of your plasma, and plasma is the only class resource that the beast has. And you can do things like uh, supercharge your uh, plasma buildup. It can actually harm you when you do so. Uh, nevertheless, one of the, I'd say, coolest insta-kills, but quite a challenging one to pull off in PvP, is uh, you basically um, engulfing your foes in flames, which is pretty cool. We like that. Suit tech. Other abilities that a beast grants its operator, such as using the jump chats, activating advanced life support, and balancing production of okay. overcharge does not exist anymore, but there is rather suit routing, which uh, routes power to different parts, different weapons, uh, different slots of weapons, I suppose. Um, there is, of course, much more to tell. Okay, yeah, this is uh, was written quite a while ago. So suit tech, yeah, it basically involves you using uh, all the stuff on your suit. So you grab them, grab their arms and crush them, grab their legs and crush them. A lot of um, stuff that involves uh, like using using your uh, physical self rather than your weapons. So that pretty much covers it for Beast. Uh, it's obviously very simple. Uh, just go out and use big guns and kill them. Uh, it's quite a popular class, I'd say, at the moment. 
Um, actually, I'd say all the classes are fairly evenly distributed. Maybe there's more theories. Anyway, yeah, we'll move on. Okay, next up we have the engineer. Those of the engineer class in Starborn are tinkerers and creators, and they use their creations to great and deadly effect. So here's a picture of an elegant riding his hoverboard, or her, I can't tell, there. Anyway, basically uh, the engineer has gadgets and turrets and bots. And these are the three skills, and with them together, this is basically what it looks like. When an engineer walks into the room, you know it because the engineer comes with their whole host, uh, entre uh, their entourage. So um, let's go down here. What can an engineer do? Engineers are primarily known for a wide range of items they employ, from stationary turrets to mobile drones, from magnetrons to hoverboards. Their three skills are gadgets. This is all about just what it says, various kinds of gadgets. Here you'll find abilities using around hoverboard use, magnetron strength rays, tasers, wormhole generators, and much more. Yep, that's uh, still quite accurate. Turrets, with this engineers establish a network of turrets that other engineers can splice into that must be powered with a QPC, a quantum power cell. These turrets can be of multiple types from laser to flamethrower to strobe and more, and the engineer can even transfer control of a specific tur turret network to someone else, engineer or not. Everybody remembers the first time they get a face full of shrapnel from a shard failure because it hurts so much. Ouch. That's incredibly true. Yes. Uh, one of the most formidable classes in PvP, but with the weakness that if your opponent is able to kill your bots, then you're missing quite a, and your turrets then you're missing sort of 66 percent of your abilities which is never fun and build rebuilding these things mid fight is quite difficult but for hunting that's not a problem um yeah this is uh quite accurate uh, another thing to add here would be that in addition to having this uh type of barrel like from laser or shard flinger or flamethrower you also add in mods to each turret, so they're actually quite extensible, modifiable, these turrets. Moving on then to bots. An engineer can deploy multiple bots, ranging from scouting drones to tank bots to burrow bots and more. These bots just don't do damage. They can do things like push a table over on someone, take cover behind it, or to spy on a particular room. These bots can be sent on multiple rooms multi-room patrol path set up by the engineer that the bot will, bot will move through on repeat, allowing the engineer to project power beyond her location. Not a much used ability, but nevertheless it does exist. Bots, yes. Like I said, you always know when an engineer has arrived, because there's yeah, five bots that come with them. Um, tank bot, quite a heavily used one. Another heavy, heavily used one is a carry bot, which well, carries the turret from room to room. If you want to um, go that way, you can also set up a turret in every single room, which is, uh, I think, slightly better. But um, that pretty much covers it for the engineer. Moving on to Fury. The Fury embodies the explosive nature of Star Kith itself, and it's probably the hardest class to play to effectively play. Combining Star Kith use with rage-fueled acrobatics and flame-wreathed kith blades, though, means a fury really lives up to its name. <clears throat> it's hard for me to talk about furies. Furies make me furious. It's, there's no there's no concealing that fact. I hate fighting furies. They're just so strong. Let me just dismiss one uh, I would say myth, and it comes here from here. This is the hardest class to effectively play. Come on, come on. We gotta edit this page. That's not true. Uh, okay, Starkith. Uh, Starkith is uh, the first side, 
or I would say the second side of Kif, uh, which uh, uh, I don't want to do a full history of Kif, but nevertheless, uh, to introduce the lore of Fury and also Nanus here, let's just briefly mention that there was in the Elder Days a Imperial called uh, Omega. And Omega, when he was destroyed uh, for, under mysterious circumstances, the Wild Kith, which was this uh, link to a place called Will Space, which is kind of like the transcendent realm that a lot of the elders were um, transcending to uh, in the Elder Era, Wild Kith collapsed into two bifurcated into the star and the void and star is focused around the power of suns and stars and the fury embodies that the power of the stars and it's a melee class using it this kith blade and you can see here lots of fire a uh, very nice jinn wielding a kith blade here what can a fury do well, the first thing is battle flow. This is skills that involve using your blade. This skill combines kith blades use with stance-based attacks that flow into each other via transitions. So for instance, say you're entering the combat, you might choose to launch an upward slashing attack. After the attack finishes, there's a short window where you're, you're transitioning to a new stance determined by the attack you used, during which you can use a rage ability, see below. So in that case, an upward slash might land you in the ember stance, after which you'll be able to use a rage ability and have a new set of potential attacks to launch. Maybe from Ember Stance you choose to cut at your opponent's legs, which would lead you into Flare Stance. Key point here is that the order of things goes Battle Flow Attack, Rage Ability, and New Stance. You really stay in the same stance from attack to attack. Well, actually it goes Battle Flow Attack, New Stance, Rage Ability. Anyway, you rarely stay in the same stance uh, from attack to attack, and you don't manually trigger your stance changes although there is one ability to do so. The, the attack, it, you have to be, anyway. The attack you use and the stance you were previously in determines what stance you flow to. Okay. Uh, yeah, that pretty much sum sums it up. Uh, it sums up rage as well, quite quite succinctly. Um, let's, let, let's read rage and we'll talk about comboing. Rage is both the name and the skill of the class and the class specific resource furies have you generate rage on successful kit blade hits and you can then use the rage abilities in the middle of transitions to new stances in uh, battle flow many rage abilities can also only be used in the specific stance transitions too making the way in which you decide to flow through the stances in battle flow even more important rage abilities tend to allow you to augment your normal physical abilities and allows you to do things like knock a prop and adjacent, into an adjacent room. Is that true anymore? I don't think that's true anymore. Hit them so hard, they take internal damage, and if you've earned enough rage, you can go into an overpowered mode, which is called Unstoppable. That gives you access to some powerful abilities that'll work from any stance. Yes, a, there is nothing scarier in PvP, I would say, than an Unstoppable Fury. It's simply incredibly strong. Uh, so this is sort of giving us a general idea the way we'll, we'll talk about it when we look at theory more in depth, but basically you combo a battle flow maneuver depending on, you, you choose your battle flow attack depending on which stance you're in and which stance you would like to go to. Your battle flow attack will lead you to a new stance and the stance that the new stance that you're in will determine which rage ability you comboed with that battle battle flow attack and then you simply you'll be in a new stance and you choose another battle flow attack from there and usually you rotate between two or three stances maybe if you want to go for a specific ability you set it up with two or three hits but um this is sort of complicated when you're trying to learn it once you get it down it's not too bad and i think that's why it says it's the hardest class to effectively effectively play um it's a it's a little um, difficult i'd say if you're doing it entirely manually yourself trying to remember 
which um, stances you need to be in and so on and so forth. But yeah, the last skill here is Fulmination. This is a star kith based skill that does everything from altering your effects, the, the effects your kith blade can deliver to inducing hallucinations by giving someone a bad fever to creating mirages to blasting everyone in the room with flame. Unlike battle flow and rage, which are fairly intertwined, fulmination sits apart and abilities can be when you choose. Yeah, so this is, yeah, so if you think of battle flow and rage as sort of this uh, combined, uh, comboed into this kith blade, uh, fulmination, while there are, with fulmination you can shape the blade, give it different shapes from wind to flame and uh, lightning and so on, which have different effects. Uh, but most mostly it's you using fire or fire-based things to affect the room, affect others. Some incredibly, incredibly powerful abilities in fulmination, but not typically used for bashing. There, though there you can at the beginning uh, bash is exclusively with fulmination moving on to scoundrel scoundrel is one of starmorn's classes and has its roots in beloved sci-fi characters like han solo or captain mal reynolds in starmorn scoundrels fight dirty and are prepared to win at all costs with a sardonic outlook on life and the ability to make use of their surroundings to maximum effect a scoundrel definitely shoots first so yes, we're all quite familiar with this uh, character, though not all the scoundrels choose to play this style of character. It's ultimately kind of limiting if you decide you're going to make a scoundrel and play this. It's it's been done quite a quite a bit, I'd say. But nevertheless, you you can go for this kind of feel. Um, but if you also just want to be a person that uses a gun and shoots people, and is a sort of has a bunch of classic sci-fi tropes um then scoundrel is also fine for you so don't don't feel like you need to play this type of character like a, a fight like a, a sardonic outlook on life that's that's not necessarily how you need to role play if you uh, are a scoundrel what can a scoundrel do this class as with other classes has three class skills each with many abilities in it scoundrels have gun singing in this, uh, it's this skill that scoundrels are probably most known for. With their trusty and iconic multi-ammo piece by their sides, the scoundrel is a force to be reckoned with, making near impossible shots, switching ammo types, and using reload combos. I always forget what piece stands for. Prion Industries Electro Switching Compact Eradicator. It's a blaster, you guys. It's just a blaster, honestly. Guile. Uh, no, let's talk a little bit about gunsling first. Yes, so... Basically, you, your gun has bullets, and you shoot off all your bullets, and then you reload. While you're reloading, you do some fancy ability. Uh, maybe you throw an IED from uh, this, or you spin around, you spin your gun. Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some fun stuff you can do while reloading, and that's sort of a lot of what the flavor of the class is. And one of the weird things when you're a scoundrel is like you kind of want to be out of bullets a lot of the time because some of the strongest abilities you can do while reloading. So there's also an ability called Gun Eject where you just drop your magazine. So you'll actually see a lot of scoundrels do their reloading ability and then eject their gun and then do another reloading ability. It's kind of a little bit weird, but nevertheless, it's quite strong. Guile. This is where this, uh, some of the scoundrels' dirty fighting comes into play. In Guile, a scoundrel might fire off a blast from a jetpack to send up a blinding wave of dust and grit. She might smash you in the face with titanium knuckles. She might dive from cover to cover and can even plant bugs to keep an eye on what's going on in other parts of the game. Yeah, this is a fairly accurate description. Nothing too much for me to add here other than the fact that recently Haymaker, which has been simply the ability which lets you punch them in the face really hard, is quite a strong attack. You have your knuckle dusters on, and yeah, it's uh, a lot of damage. Nothing more to say there. Improvisation. In this skill, scoundrels construct and use various types of IADs. 
improvised explosive devices to cause maximum chaos and damage. They can then do various things with them, such as throw them into an adjacent room, attach tripwires to them, attach them to walls or props using magnets, and so on. And a little note to peace. While Prion Industries invented the piece, they've been out of business for decades. The name, however, has stuck. It's like Kleenex, except Kleenex hasn't gone out of business. Okay, that pretty much covers for Scoundrel, I think. It's a very straightforward class from the lore perspective. You have a gun, you have bombs, you have some, some cheap tricks, and you're going to basically outmaneuver your opponents in order to kill them. Um, their insta-kill is pretty fun. It involves uh, tying them up and shoving a bomb down their throat. So, very nice. My favorite class, Nano's here. Look, it even has the longest blurb, because they know. They know it's the best. For a very long time, scientists had been working uh, to give people the ability to finally control swarms of nanites by thought or gesture. But no workable solution had been found for an individual to take command over the millions of individual nanites that make up a swarm. Then, in 2616 BE, a Shen Void user, oh, of course also this was invented, the best class was in, invented by the best race, Shen Void user, user named Amasha Atik, managed to bring the level of control necessary without the rapid degradation previous attempts had seen. The key, as it turned out, is using Void Kith. This is the other half of Star Kith. It revolves around black, black holes instead of stars. Um, but not in this raw form, which had been tried many times without success. Kith can be quite powerful, but lacks the precision required on its own. What Amasha discovered was that by filtering out the void kit through its pseudo-organic circuits in the form of intricate tattoos inscribed using the substance called Iril, which is the best substance in the game, I would say, also, this kit-associated material is only found orbiting at high velocity the largest black holes. Iril doesn't fit into the commonly accepted forms of solid matter, gas, liquid, solid, plasma, and appears to sometimes have the properties of all four simultaneously. What we're certain about, however, is its strong connection to Kith. Unlike Astrium, which is believed to be a byproduct of Ural decay, Ural itself appears to have a direct relation to, to Kith, and perhaps could be said to contain some Kith. Nanoseos therefore funnel void Kith into these Ural tattoos, where the Kith is filtered into a force with less raw power but far more precision, and then transmitted to the nanite swarm via the swarm glove. Uh, this is um, not. It is now called a gauntlet. Yes, that's what it is. Um, although. Uh, We'll finish reading this and we'll talk about it. And then transmitted to the nanite swarm via the swarm glove, worn on the same hand as the Ural arm tattoo. The nanogalls permit the nanoseer to see an alternate reality layer to help them see what individual members of the swarm are doing. So here's a Shen with their nanogoggles, their Ural tattoos, and this is uh, now called uh, the gauntlet. And the gauntlet is actually more involved with the kith-based attacks. Nevertheless, the gauntlet is somehow supposed to be connected with the control of the nanites. It's a little difficult to tell what's going on, honestly. And a void bomb, yes. This is a vacuum sphere. We we really want we really love these, honestly. These are the this is the, the coolest ability in the game. Um and it can only be countered by the lamest ability in the game, which the Fury has, which makes this go away, and I'm very salty about it. This is the Nanite Swarm. Um, this is the salt coming off the Nano Seer, because this, he's, he sees that the Void Bomb is about to get negated by the stupid Fury. What can a Nano Seer do? Nano Attack. Control over a Nanite Swarm as detailed above. That's That's pretty accurate. Yeah, you just send your nanites out to, you know, annoy your opponents and bite their skin and swarm them and get in their eyes and 
the incredible nuisances, uh, a lot of mental afflictions involved in this uh, nano seer PvP. And nanotech is not used that much in hunting, although you can, if you want, use an entirely nanotech based rotation. Voidism. Using the power of void kit, they're able to do things like levitate, hurl props around by creating localized voids in the direction they wish to hurl them, throw void bombs, and more. You also are able to freeze your opponents. Uh, part of void is that it's sort of ice based. So if Fury is fire based, now if Fury is ice based, and most of the hunting attacks, <clears throat> the only hunting attack, anyway, we'll talk about it, comes from voidism. A uh, lot of really strong abilities in voidism as well. Oblivion. I haven't, they haven't really addressed this final aspect of the nan Nanoseer up here, but Oblivion. This mystic skill sees the Nanoseers connecting to and using energy from the long dead Imperials. Ah, but are they really dead? The eldest beings known in our universe. Their energy filtered through back holes is what we know as Void Kit. But even after the fil filtration process, all energy isn't the same. The different Imperials had differences in flavor by tooting into these different frequencies. One gains various abilities, like gaining immunity to different kinds of damage, reversing your local timeline for a few seconds, just a fabulous ability, oh my goodness, destroying an item, and more. The five Imperials able to be tuned to are the Architect, also called Omega, Conqueror, Traveler, Progenitor, and Sunderer. Usually you can only have one Imperial channeled uh, at any given time. That said, you can unlock a, an ability to uh, call it Oblivion Affinity, which lets you channel multiple, multiple Imperials at the same time. This is a fantastic support class. A lot of abilities that support the class do its thing. And honestly, I just want to con continue nerding about nerding out on Nanos here, because obviously it's the best. But I think we'll call it there. We'll we'll be fair to the other classes a little bit, although we don't have to be fair to Fury. Screw Furies. Um, yeah. So like I said, this is meant to be just a general overview of the classes, and in the future we'll have a video dedicated to each class. Next, next, uh, next time I want to simply talk about. Um, client setup. So we're going to be uh, looking at Nexus and we're going to be installing some packages, showing you guys how to install these things and get a lot of quality of life stuff. And we'll finally start playing the game again um, with that. And then we'll probably start taking a dive into the classes. So if there's a class that you would like to see come up first, let me know, leave a comment, hit me up on Discord, whatever you want. Tell me which class uh, I should do. It's going to require a little bit of uh, preparation for me for each class because I'm quite familiar with Nanosphere. Um, I'm fairly familiar with Beast and Fury, and then eh, I'd say I'm least familiar with Scoundrel. Uh, I have uh, alts all over the world, so we should be okay. Anyway, okay. Uh, thanks for today, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.